everyone. I am Dr. Durdana Oves from Department of Commerce, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. The agenda for this video lecture is reflation. Every economy experiences cycles of growth and decline, uh, like employment decreases, like prices decreases, in all economic activities decreases. This leads to recession. When this happens, there is a steady decrease in employment, uh, prices decrease, economic activities decrease. The economy experiences a contraction that could lead to recession. When this happens, the government tries to tries to increase these uh, economic activities, employment tries to increase the prices so that the economy can recover. Uh, the government tries to get the economy growing again. This process is known as reflation. Government can cause reflation by decreasing interest rates or lowering taxes or modifying the money supply or increasing uh, infrastructure expenditure. The major goal is to increase uh, economic activity to persuade customers to spend more money. That is, we can say Reflation is what's intended to happen. Intended because that is what the government wants to try to happen when during an economic uh, downturn or economic when economic activity decreases. When and then officials move the government, government representatives move to pull the economy out of the recession. Arving Fisher an American neoclassical economics had created the phrase reflation to describe the rising economic growth and restoring the long term inflation line. He had actually coined this word during uh, 1929 Wall Street crash. As such, we can say that this word is made up of two words re and inflation that is reinflation that is to reinflate the economy by uh, using a lot of government uh, instruments monetary policy instruments fiscal policy instruments to give the economy a boost moreover g d h cole once said that reflation may be defined as inflation that is deliberately undertaken to relieve a depression a depression is a substantial and long term decline in economic activity. Whenever economic activity declines, the government tries to deliberately inflate the economy back to its track. As such, we can define reflation as a fiscal or monetary policy. Fiscal policy refers to the actions that are taken by the government such as changing the level of government expenditure, tax rate in order to impact uh, the aggregate demand in the country's economy or monetary policy. Monetary policy refers to the actions of the governments at, uh, uh, that are taken by the central bank. Monetary policy refers to the actions of a country's central bank such as regulating the money supply, uh, increasing or reducing interest rates, designed to expand output stimulate spending and curb the effect of deflation. Deflation happens when the prices of goods and services decrease, which usually occurs after a period of economic uncertainty or recession. A recession is a period of declining economic performance across the entire economy that lasts, uh, lasts for several months. Okay? That, and the definition continues to say the term may also be used to describe the first phase of economic recovery. Now, economic recovery is a process of reallocating resources and people from uh, falling enterprises and investment to new employment and uses. After a period of contraction, uh, in economics contraction refers to a stage of business cycle in which the economy as a whole declines. As such, reflation word can be used to define a policy that is undertaken by the government or a phase of recovery. That is when we have a look at the business cycle, if uh, the policy measures are taken to overcome depression, you will find the uh, reflationary policies lying due uh, or undertaken during recession and depression. And 
it can be called as the first phase of recovery. So, that leads us to the point, uh, prices increase bo in both reflation as well as inflation. So, are they the same? No. It is important to note not to confuse reflation with inflation, although both relates to price increase in the economy. That is, reflation uh, relay also is linked to increase in prices as well as inflation. But inflation happens after the economy has reached full level of employment and reflation occurs before the economy has reached full level of employment. Prices increase during the period of full capacity during inflation and during re, uh, reflation prices increase from below average level of economic activity. Moreover, uh, inflation is always considered as bad because it, uh, because it decreases the purchasing power of the individual. On the other hand, reflation is not considered as bad. It is actually deliberately undertaken by the government. In inflation, prices increase very fast, whereas in reflation, prices increase gradually. So, in essence, reflation can be described as controlled inflation. But the major difference between the two is that inflation happens after the economy has reached full level of employment, whereas reflation occurs before the economy has reached full level of employment. Both reflation and uh, inflation relate to price increase, but there is a key difference between the two regarding to at which time period they occur. It can also be taken to understand. Another way to think about reflation is to consider a balloon that has lost its air. The balloon has the potential to be quite large but needs some help to get back to its normal health. In this case of the economy, the government steps in and provides the necessary help. So, based on these, let us see the characteristics. The characteristics of reflation are, firstly, it is a policy that is enacted during the period of economic slowdown. Secondly, it occurs when the economy is below full employment level. Thirdly, reflation is considered as a period of economic recovery because in this period, a lot of steps are taken by the government to bring back the economy on track. Next, the goal is to expand the output in the economy through various measures so that the economic activity increases. And lastly, the policies that are undertaken during reflationary period aim to increase the money supply in the economy. So, these are the main characteristics of reflation. Based on these characteristics, let us see how reflation works. As we know, reflation is a policy that is enacted after a period of economic slowdown or a contraction. It occurs when the economy is below full employment and as such economic stimulus has to be provided by the government which increases the prices. So, what are these measures that are adopted by the governments? Let us have a look. The first measure that are adopted relates to fiscal policy measures. Like in uh, fiscal policy measures that can be taken up by the government, uh, lies the direct stimulus payment that are given by the government to the consumers. Second, the government can extend in, uh, unemployment benefit to a uh, greater amounts. Thirdly, loans and aid funds can be sent to local governments. And fourthly, payroll tax deferments can be given for business. The second set of policies relate to monetary policy actions. Monetary policy actions can include lowering of tax. Monetary policy actions can include lowering of interest rates. It can also include uh, direct government loans to the business. And thirdly, relaxed regulatory requirements for banks. These measures help the economy come out of the economic shocks or the decreased economic activity. So, 
what happens to the economy after reflationary policies are adopted? Let us see the implications. The implications can be divided into two parts, the advantages and disadvantages. The advantages include reflation increases the money supply in the economy and leads to economic expansion and output. Reflation also helps economies stabilize and rerun themselves after a steep deflation has occurred in the economy. Thirdly, it also helps in creation of employment in the economy through increased consumption. Fourthly, it also helps in tackling deflation and keeping inflation around the check. Reflation also leads to lower interest rates through the monetary measures that are adopted by the government. Also, reflation helps in increasing the manufacturing and production activities in the economy through the measures that are taken up by the government. Now, coming to disadvantages, reflation can lead to excess of money supply in the economy. This excess of money supply can lead to hyperinflation. Moreover, uh, reflation can lead the government to, uh, to take more loans, more borrowings, more dependence on external funds from other countries to increase the money supply in the economy. That is, reflation leads to government's fiscal deficit. And lastly, reflation can also lead to heavy debt or loans that are taken by the government. This uh, overlending by the commercial and public banks in the economy, which in turn will re relate to uh, non-performing assets in the industry. So, that was all for today's video lecture. 